I'm going to try to run 100,000 meters to celebrate that I just got 100,000 subscribers. And I've been dreaming of doing this for the last five years and becoming the first person ever to run a 100 kilometer ultra marathon while carrying this uh, YouTube subscriber award. And now when I've started this thing, I must say that the feeling is a bit mixed. On the one hand, I'm super happy to have this thing and to be able to start this ultra marathon, but I'm also pretty afraid of how my body will respond to this. <laughs> Look at that, 96,700. This is of course great that I'm getting so close to this for me magical number. But the thing that is not so great with this is that I'm for sure not ready to run a 100km ultra marathon uh, right now. I'm probably in the worst shape I've been in a very long time. I've been sick almost all the winter and I just got well again after having a pretty bad uh, version of uh, Covid. According to the projections of this site I will hit 100,000 subscribers in 21 uh, days from now. And I've read that it takes about one month to receive your award from YouTube after hitting that uh, milestone. So that gives me approximately two months to prepare before I receive my award and to be honest I would never recommend to someone to use this little time to prepare for a 100km ultra marathon. But I don't want to give up on this and uh, if I, everything goes according to plan from now on and I can train the way I want to and really put in the work, it might be doable. Can you see that? A deer. The only living thing I've seen awake so far. <laughs> So I'm not going to carry this thing in my hand the whole way. I'm going to try to fit it in my running vest and hopefully it's not too uncomfortable up there. Since I got this YouTube play button so late, I haven't really gotten to try out how it feels to run with in the running vest. And uh, let's just say it's not super comfortable. <laughs> hopefully it won't cause me too much uh, chafing over the next 100 kilometers. Uh, I ran one kilometer right now, so only 100 times more of this. It's always so strange in the start of these super long distances. Because right now, of course, my body feels good. I've just started, but you start to stress out about all of these small things. Will the play button award start shaping on my back and cause me problems? Uh, oh, maybe I have a slight niggle in my knee. All these things that are basically just uh, some anxiety, hopefully soon leaving the body as I get on with this thing. But if it's one thing that I've learned with the little experience I have from ultramarathon running, it is that you can't think too much about how far you have to go, because that will just uh, kill your motivation. <laughs> you gotta split it out up into smaller goals that feels more reachable. So right now I'm just trying to focus on catching the ferry to get off this island where I start this 100 km route at the beautiful west coast of Sweden. This is the 100 km or 62 miles long route that I had planned. It is a mix between roads, rocks by the ocean and technical trails that was going to turn out to be way more challenging than I had anticipated. The total climbing of the course is 1800 meters and my goal was to complete this whole thing in under 15 hours. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. First mishap of the day. So it is like three kilometers to the ferry. And when I got there, I realized that I forgot my phone at home. And for safety reasons, I gotta have that thing with me today. So time to go back. I have the phone back to catch the next uh, ferry. Ah, I got a bit stressed for a while, but it really doesn't matter because I remember that the route is actually a bit short, so now I just can cut one of those extra loops that I was going to do at the end, so then it will be 100 kilometers either way. Made it back to the next uh, ferry. <laughs> now this adventure can really start. Uh, it's so nice to finally move on the planned course again. It still feels a bit weird to me that I'm even able to start this uh, thing today. For quite a long time I didn't thought that I was going to be able to get my body to a point where I thought that it wouldn't be dangerous for me to attempt 
running this 100k uh, this summer. I've been feeling really tired ever since I got that uh, COVID and although I feel that I'm not sick anymore, my body just doesn't respond the way I want it to do. So the best thing now is just to take it easy with training. So my main training right now is uh, jogging back and forth uh, from the daycare and that is like four kilometers of running easy jogging. So I think that's a great way to, to start off the training again, but I really I gotta start to feel better soon if I'm going to be able to run that 100k. I finally left that big main road and I tried to plan this route to go for as many beautiful places as possible. So you will get to see some pretty epic places if I manage to get my body to those places. But so far so good. I'm 10 kilometers in. Just gotta do 10 more of those. <sighs> that feels a lot, but what I try to do is to split it into 20 kilometer distances because that's long, but it still feels manageable. And then I just gotta get five of those done. And I'm halfway done with the first one. <laughs> you always try to play these mind games to make something incredibly hard seem <laughs> manageable, I guess. First 20 kilometers done and uh, still feeling good. And I'm just trying to find my rhythm and actually enjoy that I get to spend the day out here running. <sighs> because it's so easy to think too much about what's ahead and how I'll be feeling after the next 20 kilometers and after the <laughs> next one after that and how I will be feeling when I get back to the island and the ferry back home. My body has finally started to feel a bit better at least. So today I'm going to try to run my first longer run in a really long time. I'm going for 20 kilometers on these nice forest trails we have here. So let's just hope that my body responds okay to this because it's getting closer. It's a weird feeling being stressed out by how quickly the subscriber number are growing. Of course, I'm happy about that, but I really want to be able to, to run that 100k when I receive the YouTube play button. Ah, so I just uh, finished uh, 20 kilometers on the clock and I don't know what to say. It was tough. I'm, uh, I'm not in the shape that I would want to be in. Hopefully I didn't overdo it today and this is one step closer to getting back into good shape and that 100k run. Yeah, let's just hope so. Finally first food store of the day. Since uh, this uh, ultra is not a race and self-supported, I have plotted in some food stores along the way to resupply on some energy and uh, water. As I was running through these beautiful fishing villages being re-energized from the food stop, I felt great. I was ticking off the kilometers and managed to be in the present enjoying that I get to do this adventure. At this point I was also ahead of my goal of getting this done under 15 hours. But still, in the back of my mind I knew that I had already ran longer than most of my runs the last two years and had no idea what to expect for the next 10 hours plus of running. Hello birds! I'm starting to talk to animals. That's a good sign that I've been running for some hours already. I gotta try to drink and, and eat as much as I can without getting stomach pain. Because one thing that's for sure about these ultra distances is, is, it is that it's a lot about taking in enough energy and fluids. Otherwise you will bonk. <laughs> it's just a matter of time but you will feel dead. <laughs> what happened this morning? Uh, I finally passed 100,000 subscribers. It's 
feels insane passing this uh, milestone. I'm so grateful to every single one who supports uh, what I'm doing on my channel. And now I am finally get to fill in my shipping details for my Silver Play Button uh, YouTube award. And then I guess I really need to get into training mode. Mm. Mm. Ja, gör en torta. <laughs> First little climb of the day. This route that I'm running, it's not uh, that much elevation on it, but there are some steep hills here and there. And <laughs> I'm starting to feel a bit tired. I'm a bit more than 30 kilometers in. And I guess it's a good sign that I'm first starting to feel tired now. I'll be feeling really good up to this point, but still, it's a really long way to go. So I bought a lot of food and some drinks and no I will not be running that far with this thing but I will be hopefully find a good spot to hide this uh, in the forest outside of this little village where I will come back in about 30 kilometers from now to hopefully <laughs> regain this and have a good refueling spot there. Okay, hopefully no one will find this and take it because if this is not here when I come back in about 30 kilometers and a lot of hours from now then I'm a bit screwed. Now I just gotta remember which tree I put it behind. I think it was that one. Let's see how sharp my head is when I get to, get to this place in a couple of hours. I don't want my head to blow off. <laughs> uh, and I'm heading even further out to the archipelago. And I think it will be really windy out there. And the weather forecast said that it might rain as well. So maybe the honeymoon phase of this 100k is over. There's supposed to be a trail here. Or maybe it's further down. Ah. I think this... That's the trail. <laughs> Do you want some nice grass? Ah, oh, you're a bit afraid. That's okay. <laughs> Have a nice day. Look who's up there. That is my friend Oscar, who hopefully has come to join me. I uh, came at the uh, perfect timing. I was just trying to socialize with some sheep over there. So. Almost made it. <laughs> Didn't make it over. Uh. So yeah, I'm really glad that Oscar joined me at this beautiful island. The weather looks a bit suspicious over there and it's really windy, but with a friend to run with, I think I will be able to enjoy this next couple of kilometers where we will be running a lap around this island. So for how long will you be joining me, Oscar? The plan was for the rest of the run, so like 60k. Yes. But yeah, uh, I hope so. <laughs> it will, will make it a lot more fun if you if you join the next 60k. That means that you will do an ultra marathon today as well, and also run your furthest uh, distance ever, right? Yeah. What's the longest you ever ran before? That was like 48k. Let's go hit that. The rain is starting to pick up and the skies look a bit dark over there. <laughs> uh, I think we gotta try to get off this island and not, not spend too much time here. <laughs> uh, I think we were a bit unlucky because at least the weather forecast said that the only like uh, hours where the weather would be quite bad with, with heavy wind and rain would be 
exact the time we will be out there on the cliffs out in the archipelago where we will be the most exposed to the weather. <laughs> As the rain started pouring down about six hours into my run, I was starting to feel that it had already been a long day. And with the weather and rain that was waiting us on this island, I was a bit worried for what to come. But I decided to first focus on getting through this rainstorm and off the island, and try to embrace that the challenging weather in combination with the breathtaking nature on this island made it into an even greater adventure. And I was really happy to have Oscar by my side at this challenging part. I just finished this mountain uh, race and I thought I was going to be able to run around 140 on the steep and technical 13 km course but I ended up doing 155 and I'm just, I'm just dead. Hopefully I will get stronger from now on and you really need to start uh, doing the right things and start to uh, see an improvement if I'm going to be able to survive 100 kilometers. We're almost done with uh, this island and it was really nice that the weather turned out a little bit better after a while. And quick uh, status uh, report. I'm starting to feel a bit of pain in my hips but Otherwise, the mood is good. Good. <laughs> what do you say, Oscar? Yeah, it's okay. But as, speaking of the sun, now it starts raining again. Of, of course, of course. Let's get off this island and into the forest. <laughs> ah! Can't make it up here. <laughs> when I planned this route, I thought there was some sort of trail here, but. <laughs> We're running pretty much off-road here. Maybe over here, Oscar. Yeah, the, the track should go here, yeah. This is some resemblance of a trail, at least. As you can imagine, we're not doing the fastest kilometers right now. Jag har det på film här också. Så. Jag har äntligen hittat en sån här trail. Det är väldigt bra här också. Wet feet. <laughs> I have no problem getting wet feet usually, but when you're going to run this long, the risk of blisters increase quite much when you get wet feet. <laughs> A sign of uh, civilization at least. Road. I'm usually not the biggest fan of running on roads. I prefer being out there on the trails, but right now, this thing here was pretty welcome. Because we gotta keep moving forwards here, I think. Oh. 
we're starting to get a bit frustrated that it's so wet everywhere here. It was raining massively this uh, last night and also as you saw earlier. But now we come to the point that we just gotta embrace it. Ah! <laughs> Running through all of that dirt uh, gave us pretty messed up feet. So I'm going to try to change my socks now. But this is what the feet looks like after roughly 60 kilometers. Today and tomorrow is going to be crucial in my 100 km ultra marathon preparation because uh, this will be the toughest training days in this preparation and I'm doing a back-to-back -back long run meaning that I will do a long run today and also tomorrow so what I'm doing today is a 30 km train run hopefully this one will do me good in my preparation I'm also a bit nervous today because I actually oh look at this jungle here I actually haven't ran 30 kilometers or longer than that since I ran my last uh, ultra marathon, the 100 km mountain ultra that I did, what is it now? Like, yeah, two years ago. So <laughs> I have no idea how my body will respond, but it's better to see that I'm not ready now than to do it when I'm actually trying to run 100 km again. So I'm excited to see how I feel today, and especially excited. I will feel after today when I start to run tomorrow again. Let's just hope it all works out because I really want to get that 100 km done. I said to myself I'm going to take it slow, but it's hard to pace myself when the downhills are this fun. And my body is actually feeling good for like the first time in a couple of months. This is fun. I'm so glad I set that 100k ultra goal because either way, if I managed to finish that or not, it has made me push myself back to a decent shape and be able to enjoy stuff like this. So that's why you should set a goal and get out there. I didn't think I would be feeling this good, but it is tomorrow the real test is to see how I will be feeling after this run when I try to do another long run. New day, new long run and new me, or, <laughs> or maybe not new me, old me, a slightly more tired version of me compared to yesterday. I've uh, started, I've been running about uh, one kilometer and uh, so far the body feels quite good actually. I have some small aches here and there which is uh, yeah, hopefully nothing alarming. I feel my left knee uh, a bit bad. Hopefully when I ease into this run it will feel better and better. Heading up a small little mountain here to get a pretty epic view up top. I found the trail. Nice. Here it is. How could we miss that one? Perfect trail. Now it's just a couple of kilometers left until I hopefully will find that bag of food and drinks that I hide somewhere in the forest. <laughs> I was starting to feel some pain here and there and I was really starting to feel that I've been out running for eight hours and more than 60 kilometers at this point. But still somehow I was really enjoying this part of the run. I think doing it with a friend, embracing the struggle and acknowledging that I have chosen to challenge myself like this and that it's a privilege to get to choose your own challenges helped me a lot to keep the spirit up. But with that said, the big problems and the really tough part of this day was still to come.
think it was that tree. Let's see if I can find my little goodie bag. Oh. Hello there. Ah, uh, yes. I found the treasure. <laughs> we got hit with some pretty heavy rain again, but I'm still really happy actually because now we're only one third left of this thing. But I guess it's now it begins. Now the pain starts. <laughs> I made it to the 70k mark after 11 and a half hours of running, so I was well within reach to get a sub 15 hour finish. And although I started to get a bit tired, it still feel doable to push through the last 30 kilometers in a decent pace, but I was starting to get this small pain in my left knee that was worrying me a bit. This is the first part of the day where I'm actually starting to feel tired. <laughs> Oh, really tired. This is where it gets tough, I guess. <laughs> Look what arrived. <laughs> It feels, it, feels, <laughs> it feels really surreal, like, holding this thing now. I mean, of course, I didn't put in all that work to my YouTube channel just to receive this, but sort of an, uh, sort of an acknowledgement to, to that my channel has meant something to 100,000 persons, and that's, that's just sick. But I, I feel like I can't really enjoy this before I have ran 100 kilometers <laughs> When I crossed the 80 km mark, suddenly the fun part of this day was about to end. The small pain I had in my left knee had gotten worse for the last couple of hours, and when I reached the 80k mark, it was so painful that I had to start mixing jogging with walking, and soon after that, the parts where I ran became less and less frequent. With 15 km left, only walking hurt pretty badly. And yeah, the smart thing here would of course be to call it quits. And as a physio, I would never advise anyone to continue 15 kilometers with this kind of intense pain. But I was so close to the finish line, and I really didn't want to give up on my dream of finishing this thing. I guess some dreams are worth taking a bit of a beating to achieve. Knowing that the good pace I had kept for the rest of the day would allow me to get a sub 15 hours finish if I could just keep moving and keep a decent walking pace, I decided to push through the pain. As I limped on and slowly ticked off kilometer after kilometer, I got a lot of time to think. I'm so grateful to those of you who have supported this channel on my way to 100,000 subscribers. Seven years ago I struggled with speaking English and had no filmmaking skills whatsoever, but I had a dream to inspire as many people as possible to an active lifestyle with my physio and coaching knowledge and for sharing my own journey. And if I can get 100,000 subscribers and finish this 100km ultra carrying the award, just think of what you can achieve if you just set your mind to it and put in the work. The number one person that I couldn't have done this without is my wife Elin, who saw my passion and supported me both in my running endeavors and also in my videos, even at the start when I made pretty crappy videos that no one watched. She believed in me and always showed her support. 
And just as I was thinking of Elin, there at the side of the road, I saw the love of my life, who had driven out to oh, so once nice again to support me and help me finish this thing. Oh, not that long to go. Well done. We're trying to catch the next ferry, but I'm not moving that quickly right now. Oh. Not that far to go though. It's like two and a half kilometers until I reach that 100k. One hundred kilometers. I'm the man.